What's up, everybody? It's Joe Lapuma. You were listening. You were watching the Complex Sneakers, the Complex Sneakers show. New name? Not the Complex Sneakers podcast anymore? No, we, a little bit of a rebrand. It's not Twitter turning into X, but it's a little bit <laughs> of a <God>. rebrand. <laughs> the Complex Sneakers show. We will be known as the Complex Sneakers show going forward. It's a show with my two friends, my two co-hosts. First off to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. I feel like it's going to be like a variety show where you just have all these like bits and acts in the middle of it. Yeah, maybe live, we'll... Uh, live unboxings. Exactly. Deadlifts. To my left... <laughs> Mr. Brendan Dunn, the Complex Sneakers show is here. Yes. So you can still call it the podcast if you want, whatever you want to call it. Call it whatever you want. Other name. Yeah. Can we call ourselves the greatest sneaker show on the planet, or Gr- the greatest the- sneaker show on earth? <laughs> Are you gonna? <laughs> sure. We got that one slide. Yeah. <laughs> Joe's Joe's reserving that one. Yeah. We'll see. We'll fight over the title. Podcast, but yeah, so show, complex whatever. sneakers show. Look behind me. It's reflected me. on the TV. If you're if you're listening, okay. we always give out these public service announcements. If you're listening and you're not getting the visuals, turn it on so you can see the new graphic for the complex sneakers show, formerly known as the Complex Sneakers Podcast, a duo of very inventive, descriptive names. You know, we thought it. We went to the lab. We put our heads <laughs> together, and we thought about it like this. Hmm. Mm. Took us days, but mm. also besides In the lab, like Oppenheimer. Exactly. Besides the new name, it's a very special episode. It is our hundredth. Video episode. If you're listening, turn on the video because a bunch of confetti just fell and there are balloons floating around. It's a scene of pure joy <laughs> and revelry. Listen, I remember came through COVID. Mm-hmm. We were in the first off. We were in the little room right over there, fifty feet away. Very dark room. It was it was tight in there. Very dark place. Yeah, it was. We tight shot in, in that other studio. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a conference room. This is just. Oh, way back. Way not even back a conference room. It was like not a, video. A, it was like not a, video. Uh, I'm just thinking. Yeah. Editing but, bay. And then we kind of went into video over Zoom during the pandemic and the social clips. And then, though, we were holding out for YouTube, the real 100th episode. We were holding out for YouTube. That's when we started counting right. episodes for YouTube. So I say that all to say it's been a journey. We obviously have more than 100 episodes, but this is the 100th YouTube episode no zoom clips this was the full thing when you went on to complex and you saw our smiling faces that's it so the hundred episodes but it's it's the first episode of the complex sneakers show yes yeah so that'll be an important delineation for whoever exactly. writes the wikipedia page for this exactly Remember when we were stuck on that big round stage oh yeah the round stage yeah. to, like sit 17 feet apart unless someone sneez- in case someone sneezes well those were the guidelines the <laughs> don't ra- say the word you're gonna get us flagged the the, the 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 round we've been through a lot of stages we've been through a lot yes Ma- we have do you have fond memories of being trapped in a tight dark room with mike packer and chris waddell that Wh- was which the room first was- one oh, that yeah. was before yeah, yeah, yeah. pre-youtube <laughs> yeah then it all one the at my apartment. Remember, Premium Pete was at my apartment. Yes, I remember. Yeah, that was I, that is an actual fond memory. No yeah. offense to Mr. Packer or Mr. Vidal. Yeah, but anyway, did you see the the clip of Chris Vidal that was going around like two uh, days ago? The OG, yeah, the OG, in, in Flight Club, the OG Flight Club. He's yeah, like, the greatest sneaker store in the USA, maybe the greatest sneaker store in the world. I mean, it was that it was i didn't see the clip don't you think that at that time it was from it was just some like it was from like 2006 2007 throwback video don't you think at that time it was for sure oh yeah yes when i first got into sneakers in that era the idea of possibly going to flight club was such a distant dream something something i would spend hours thinking about and many more hours browsing the website and just Looking at profile photos of shoes, we and then going a, there. D- d- not a debate about that, but I think like in the one of the group chats the other day, we had posted the clip, and people who maybe who hadn't been into shoes back then were like, "Why is this guy saying, oh, greatest sneaker store in, oh, in the world?'" It was, and then I'm like, "It was, it was, yeah." And he knew it. He knew it. He knew it when you went in there, Chris Vidal. Talk Shout out that, to our friend Chris. T- talk that cash shit when you went in there. Okay, <laughs> had a had a. Well, I always say it had a young. Intern JLP shook when yeah. I went in there. Yeah, now Shaky we're all dog now we're all friends though. Yes. Uh, shouts to Chris Vidal. We don't, also don't still go. we still have to go to the skate shop. I, I'm good to go. Chris Upper Fidel's, West skates. Uh, yeah. Don't try to steal a deck from Chris Vidal's skate shop. It might oh, yeah, not end. Might not end well for you. He's still on timing. He's been on timing. He's still on. Timing. <laughs> he's got the ring camera footage. Still to prove on it. timing. <laughs> shouts, to, shouts, shouts to the OG. Yes, absolutely, 100. percent Can I say something real of quick course. about mesh runners? 
Are we getting there already? Before I guess. I just I just had a thought pop into my head where maybe this shoe is not totally error appropriate for this trend right now, but I'm like Nike Air Zoom Spirit on. I feel like could fit right into that. You know, I, I actually I had the same thought the other day. Are our brains so connected? No, I it uh, it came up because I had seen um, alumni of Full Size Run, Larry June. Mm-hmm. I think he wears a lot of really cool stuff, but he's been on like the the Mesh Runner tip, and I was kind of I'm surprised that sometimes of the things he breaks out because I'm yeah. like, oh, it's so cool, or on like on trend or not expecting it. And then the other day he was wearing the OG Spiridons. Yeah. And I saw it. He was, I think he was wearing it with a bucket hat. And I'm just like, oh man, like that's, that's the look. It predates a lot of the stuff we talk about in this trend by about a decade, maybe a decade and a half. But I feel like it makes sense for that. I I want more Spiridons. And it looks so much different than what the mesh runner trend we're in now. Yeah, But it could be. That swoosh, that. Yeah, it looks a lot different than the styles that are very popular, but by definition, it definitely is mesh mesh runner. There was a a moment in the complex office, the old complex office, where I think JLP influenced uh, a handful of people to pop up up in the Spiridons. Really? At one moment, yeah, when that shoe came back out. You were doing the Spiridons heavy? I might have. I might have been. I probably, Have I? Yeah. I you, think, you, you sure? I, I know it's like... He there, knows for a fact. There he was, could list there, off all there the There was names. a line of like uh, JLP copycats at a, at a moment in the... <laughs> Still is. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, appreciate it. Thanks. I, I have Any to influence admit, that you remember of mine, by all means. Especially <laughs> I think, I think it was that in the... When the Air Max... It was like the Air Max 96 XX or something yeah. like that. When that one came out. Big JLP show. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know why? The Air Max 96XX? Right. I know why. Because I saw it in a John Elliott lookbook. That was all it took. That's all it took. And Simple man. Yeah, John Elliott always used to put like Nike Air Maxes and stuff. Now he, he uses his own shoes in the lookbook. But he would always put like those in the lookbooks, and then I would just get the full fit. Full fit JLP. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need... I, I need. Spirit Dons. And the thing I want to admit is that I've actually never owned a pair. OG colorways? I mean, well, there's a few Silver OG and colorways, red. but you want the red one you're talking yeah. about? Oh, actually, no. I did have the stash pair. I probably told the story on here, oh, but yep. I remember that shoe being on sale so regularly and seeing it on a sales table at Compound in Portland for $60 and not buying it then. And so the idea of paying whatever it was, 160 or 150 for the Nike Lab pairs that came out years later, mm-hmm. the inline ones, I was just like, ah, I do. That's one of those like collabs that seems like a little bit ahead of its time, though. Looking Which one? The Stash Spiridons, looking back yeah, on it. Yeah, but they rinsed it, man. They made way too many pairs. Remember, it, that was that was an outlet shoe for sure. I, again, I feel like maybe see, maybe we've tried this territory There before. was a video recently of a, of a Nike outlet, and there was... Like every undefeated, single undefeated Air Force Ones. I, I saw that the undefeated Air Force Ones, and I went. I was like, "Yeah, remember for complex comics yeah. or like the shoes?" But yeah, those those hit the outlets. I the that's actual, another one where I just think they made a million yeah. pairs, not a million literally, but yeah. a lot and of I, colorways, I like a lot those, of units. I like those. It, it Air feels Force like ones, in in recent times, it's we've heard stories about it, and, and you've seen it where it's like Nike tried to scale up their collaborations mm-hmm. almost to a point where it wasn't sustainable. Yeah, it happens sometimes. I wish I could stroll into an outlet and find a pair of Cortez 95s. Wouldn't that be simple? Wouldn't that be sweet? Yeah, still chasing those, huh? Did you see the thing that Clint posted? Yeah, I saw that. So <laughs> that, it was like the reverse colorway of fake colorway, and, and it said, he basically said that um, it got through StockX. Yeah, he posted a photo on his Instagram story with the puking emoji and a clearly extremely fugazi fake. Now you could see it for not even before anyone said that this was fake. You just saw it in it. Yeah, you would see a shoe and think that's a fake version of Cortez 95. And it almost wrote, even looked like when you see a, a shoe, you look at a shoe real quick and then it ends up being a candle. Yeah. And, and like, oh, wow. <laughs> but it had a StockX tag on there as if it came from StockX. And he wrote, StockX are enemies of progress. They sell fake clothes. They sell fake kicks. They got Stevie Wonder authenticating crap, which is hilarious. But also, I don't think that this is actually what happened. I think some people pointed out online, right, that this is not an actual StockX tag. That Yeah, I saw that people online, I think it was yesterday or, or when, when um, blogs were starting to post this, that – Apparently, that StockX tag wasn't used in almost a year. Yeah, Soul Retriever said that, yeah, right? Soul it's an Retriever's outdated one. I mean, yes, this is a funny thing to post on your Instagram story, but I feel like we can all look at that and and know that there's likely no world in which a StockX authenticator actually would let a shoe like that go through because it just doesn't look like the yeah. actual real shoe. It's not like some 
one to one rep situation where yeah. someone on Reddit is spending the money to get a sneaker that looks exactly like the real one. And if you go back and watch our episode with StockX CEO Scott Cutler, mm -hmm. and besides seeing him dodge questions, you'll see him talk about people like the fakes making the fake tags and right. trying to sell it. So yeah. yeah, that's been an issue for years. I remember when Josh Luber was still around, we had a conversation with him about that, you know, in terms of you might buy a fake pair of sneakers and it might come with a StockX tag in order to, to trick somebody. So again, funny mm -hmm. posts on social media and good, good uh, sneaker internet fodder. Good engagement. Yeah, but in, yeah. I don't think that's really what happened. And and trust me, I get I get annoyed at StockX too. You know, sometimes there's a little mm -hmm. nick on the shoes, a little glue stain on the shoe that you sold. I'm like, what what does the glue have to do with me? I wasn't in the factory putting the shoe together. What am I supposed to do about the glue that they put on the shoe? What was the shoe that they that they a pair of Nike Dunk Lows? Which one? From 2021, blue and white. Just a pair that I bought for retail, and I realized it's worth significantly more money now. And I said, you know what? Let's get rid of these. But a little bit of glue was holding me back. They can't hold me back. No, no. nobody can hold me no. back. No, I've been not at all. And what around, else is going on? around the world. What else? I mean, you saw, hopefully you saw my shoot. Your shoot? Yeah. Yeah, and clothing. Yeah. There was, it sounded like there was a question mark on that I, for a I thought you said your shoot. I wasn't sure if you said your shoot or I your mean, shoe. I mean, it's basically my shoe at this point. Okay. Yeah, this guy <laughs> modeling, this guy did a front to camera, um, a little... Video. Little. Little video. For, little video. Little video. Little for, IG reel. Yeah, for, little. For, and clothing, straight to camera, kind of like talking about you. What, did you write that script? What was yeah, it? What I, was I didn't write it. It was, you know, off the off the top. Okay. Yeah, I was. That's in, what you were in London for, huh? In, in Newcastle first, yeah, for the end clothing Adidas Torsion Super nice. collaboration. So everybody listening can go buy a pair and, um, you know, make them realize the extent to which my influence. The face of it convinced you to make Look that purchase. The face of that shoe. <laughs> a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. <laughs> yeah. Act more stupidly. Do you like them, Joe? To be fair, I only got a chance to see it. it went up right before here. Yeah. So I only got yeah. a chance to. I saw like the first, like I was in the trance, so, like the first like 20 seconds. Yeah. It was like in the rush. Thanks for supporting, office. guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll check it right after this yeah, and, and I'll throw it. a like. Yeah. Can I get a comment? We'll see. And, we'll to, <laughs> and, and, and you may have to comment. We'll see. If it was on your account, maybe. And we'll see. What else is going on? Travis Scott. His signature shoe. Is that this week? I mean, yeah. He wore them, right? Keeps wearing them. Man, when somebody pointed out the extent to which those look like a pair of Creative Rex, <laughs> I died. Oh, I saw that <laughs> I meme. Like, I saw that meme. I was like, well, this is this shoe to me will never, ever be cool for that reason. Yeah. It, uh, it, I, 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 under, I see where the shoe fits in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Travis, Nike's biggest collaborator, um, one of their only collaborators besides Clint that has hits at this day and age but uh, i don't know it do you think that it's going to translate from wait one of nike's only collaborators that has hits yeah that's that's what he's been saying yeah like the past. i would say so i think that nike's collaborators they they go to the well and all the people are a lot of i'm not saying bricks in the since it resells, just people don't care about but the like product. But like stores or personal collaborators or everyone? Just, you just put Clint and Travis as the only two? I think the only ones are like really moving the needle right now as far as like people are hyped about the product coming out. You think people are still hyped about Off-White? Uh, maybe the Air Force Ones, not the other things we've seen. The only two. That feels pretty harsh. Yeah, I, I think mm, there's I more. Know. Like social status or? Alma Minera? Um, and yeah. I I think that they're the two biggest ones that right now that are like having hits. I don't know. But you said only two. You think only two? I think so. Weren't you a fan of the Haritos SB Dunk? That's like a one off. Like I mean like Nike's like stable of like to go to it every All right. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, I don't know. Just that... felt like a bold statement. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I we'd feel have that to way. check that, but I feel that way. All right, go on. I'm if you feel that way, that's fine with me. But do you think that him getting his own actual shoe is going to translate from off from him getting the jordan ones and models like that what do you mean translate off what do you mean like the the level of like rabbinness to, yeah. to buy it I no think, i don't think so you, you think but like you're I mean, comparing look, it to something that is so 
crazy when it releases, though. So I don't think it could be. No, but no it's way. still going to be like top tier level of like everyone trying to get it. Don't you think? Um, all the kids, all his, all his followers, definitely. I I would say. I mean, here's the thing. They're like, and and how are we measuring that like amount of pairs, or if they're going to like not sell out in thirty seconds, but three minutes, or or what? I would be surprised if he can translate it because he can't even translate it to other popular Nike models. When you see him release something like a Nike Air Trainer 1, it doesn't have nearly the same level of interest as it does when he does a Jordan 1. So, mm. And that Nike Air Trainer 1 or an Air Max 1 or Air Max 270 has some built-in cachet to it. So the fact that he can't translate it there means that, in my opinion, for sure he can't translate well, it to... Well, it feels like there was a run where he all the shoes hit... You know, like even the 270, like it wasn't his biggest model, but that shoe was still. Yeah, but did anybody care about the Air Trainer ones? No, I think the Air Trainer one was a complete dud. Yeah, it's almost like you forget that happened. Yeah. So also, I... bad shoe for the most part. Not the Air Trainer one, but just like his the, version of it. Yeah. yeah, with that big shroud on it. Yeah, I, I don't see people losing their minds over the Travis Scott uh, cut the check. I think it's reported to be called. Jordan signature we'll see. Model. I think that the, concert, I think the, the model, album, and the shoe. I don't know. I I think that people. I think the model it. itself, though, is a bit like off trend at this point, right? Why do you say that? Not not that there isn't anything else on the market in that vein, but it just does. It just doesn't strike me as a shoe that looks like that is what people are clamoring for. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's fair. It'll be interesting to see, but I do think the swarm of everything that he has going on. Is going to like help. We going to Egypt? Is that a concert? No, I'm not happening? going. There. It kind of, it kind of, it kind of strikes the album, me. Album, the concert, the shoe. You know, it almost the model itself almost just kind of strikes me as something you would have seen in that 2014 to like maybe like 2017 era of when the OG Yeezys, or maybe even before that. You know, like 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. 2012, like the OG Nike Air Yeezys. Mm -hmm set the trend for yes. all like artist like artist influencer entertainer yes, right. yeah collaborations and where a lot of brands ran out to give other like l lesser famous artists and entertainers etc shoes and they kind of just rip from the formula of like this is what a yeezy looks like so when people want a shoe from an artist they want it to kind of look like a high top with a strap yeah etc and it just feels like the Travis shoe would have fit into that rather than be something super original. I agree with that. Wait a minute. What about Supreme Nike? Oh, that you're right on that. But yeah, you're I'm I'm wrong then. Okay. CDG Nike? Yeah, I was thinking oh, okay. even like I know that you guys are out on it, but like oh. I mean, no, I think I right. a lot of the maybe, CD. Maybe, can, maybe, can we, maybe, I, maybe I overthought it. Maybe I okay. uh I oversimplified okay. it. I do think I'll a lot tell of you the... one thing he's right about. What? And I've been meaning to tell him. Tell me. I'm not gonna discuss like the actual platform. But I told him, I said, and I, this is good. Damn, were you going to just go talk about sneakers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> were you going to talk about not sneakers? <laughs> yes, because I said, I said real quick. Okay. I, I said by the end of the month, he'll be on threads, and he's definitely not getting on now. And nope. he was right. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we we took our hat. We salute. I salute to are him. You, are you on threads right now? Or? Yeah. Oh. I was only going to say that CDG Sorry to interrupt Nike. the sneaker thing. Nah, no, no, no. All good. God knows I interrupt everybody at every chance I get, but <laughs> CDG Nike I think is up there, but also I feel like I, I can't blame anybody who says it's not exciting because I think half of their stuff is quite boring. But Okay, but also like Ambush, Ambush, Sakai, I know you guys probably don't like that. Sakai, I think, I think Sakai's run its course. I think both of them are pretty down as far as like it, – it's nothing against – the brands or the people who run them mm -hmm. or people who like the product because mm -hmm. it's not that i just think that they've had a lot of or the, the collaborations that they've had lately didn't make noise it didn't excite the fervor that you would have expected it to yeah one question though do you know where i'm gonna go i have no idea where go. you're gonna go what about Take tiffany there. nike that was a big one. That, that, no matter how you guys felt, I'm saying about that's it. like it's a, back in the one-off. It, it's a one-off. Yeah, oh, where it's I mean, like I mean, a from, stable of. Got it. Got it. I mean, from like where you have New Balance, et cetera, or Asics that they have their like an ALD, mm -hmm. right? Or a, a partner who or, will or come or back or season Joe, after season. A Joe Fresh Goods. Yeah, a long-term partner, et cetera, I hear you. that I hear you. tend to be a little more hits. Yeah, I just think that there was more than you said. Yeah, I, maybe I was wrong on that. But it, you it, were right on threads, though. Oh, it it just it just felt like a lot of the people that Nike used to 
go to the well for to just have guaranteed hits. You know, it, it, it's not it's, the same feeling. Anymore. Well, speaking with that, uh, with the undefeated Air Force One thing at the outlets, I believe another shoe that was sitting at the outlets too. And this is a funny one where if you had to dream up a, a hype collaboration that you thought would blow the socks off of the resale market, mm-hmm. was when they did a Sakai Cause Blazer. Yeah. I don't know about a Blazer though. Okay. But I, uh, I don't know. But Sakai and Cause. Sakai and Cause. I know, but I think that model is a tough one. But okay. I hear what and you're saying. And that was another shoe that was just sitting at the outlet yeah, a bunch. Sitting I in my room, I have a pair. Forgot that it happened, and you're just like, you love wow. to forget. Not a necessary shoe. It just feels like in in more recent times, brands have had a lot of wins, tapping people or collaborators that feel a little more closer to the community who's buying the shoes. Like they feel like a more tangible person. Yeah. In the the consumers have been able to kind of rally behind that, like a Joe Fresh Goods. Someone or, more relatable. Or a, or a Clint or a J Tips, where it's those people designing the shoes. Mm. They just feel like they're like of the culture and a real person who made it, who they can see on Instagram and yeah. social media, et cetera, where these old legacy brands where they do bring hype and cachet, mm-hmm. it just doesn't feel like it's like the trend right now to – to work with the sportswear yeah. brands. That's that's my that's, ta- that's totally my take right, on it. That's, right. a, totally that's a more well nuanced thought. Okay, <laughs> and you're allowed to fire. We everyone knows that you fire, but that was okay. Yeah. Do you, do you guys think that? I know he's gonna fire. Do you guys think that with the current with the current trends and everything? Because we talked about the whole anti hype shoe and I wave that we're gonna obviously get into that more during the episode with the whole mesh. Mm-hmm dad shoe hiking shoe etc thing right now that it feels like nike's uh horse in that race is the vomero but mm-hmm. th- they did a dornbecker vomero but do you think that it was <laughs> thing about the vomero just kidding do you think that it was a mistake on their behalf not to try and do like a cdg vomero or something like that no i still think what i said on here a while back of them withholding from any collaborations on it is a smart idea I don't think we need it. Also, another Nike collaborator that you know is coming, a cold wall, Nike yeah. Air Max Plus. Yeah. So you know Did what? Did we get our pairs yet, Joe? No. We you could throw that one. one. I think that that one, that one works. Yeah. And and when it releases and when I pull up here to <laughs> the You better set, respect it. <laughs> bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. 100th video episode. Mm-hmm. We knew that we were going to do it big. We didn't know we were going to do it this big. Sometimes we surprise ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Three to- <laughs> wow! Three time returning podcast guest on the heels about to release a big big collaboration with Marvel X Men Asics remastered for the 60th anniversary. Mister Ronnie Feig, our friend, welcome. <sighs> Rebrand on the hundredth, and I'm here for it. And he's here for no it. No better way to ring in a yes. century. Jesus, with his huge project, Kith Marvel. A6 X Men 60th anniversary. Yes, sir. Fresh off the plane from Comic Con, we both had travel issues yesterday. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I almost didn't make this, but uh, I felt like you know, I had to I had to come in for the hundredth. You almost you know didn't make it. Was it a little rocky on the PJ? What, what was no, what, what I was no the PJ issue? yesterday. Get out of here, man. <laughs> you don't have a kit. You don't have a kit. Uh, the kit jet. Don't do that. There's, I got yeah. I got I got deplaned. Yeah. Oh wow. Waited three hours. Got back on the plane. On the runway for an hour before we took off. On the runway for an hour after I landed. Hell. Yeah, man. It was bad yesterday. But it, t- it took uh, 14 hours to get here from L.A. But here I am. Yes. What's you know, the, live what's, and ready. What's yes. the Ronnie Feig airport shoe go-to? Uh, what was I wearing yesterday? Uh, I was wearing um, I was wearing Kiana 14s yesterday. It's a comfort. It's a mm-hmm. comfort thing, you know? Yeah. 41 now. I won't wear shoes that are not comfortable. Those we actually had this discussion last week about how, like, it's tough for me to wear like a Jordan one now. Yeah, I saw that actually, yeah. and I was. Uh, How'd you feel about that? Well, Jordan ones are are not uncomfortable to, for me, okay. so um, they're still they're still on rotation, but a lot fewer. I'm, it's getting they're, they're getting a lot fewer wears. Mm. Uh, are there shoes you days. took out of your rotation because you just realized this is a classic but not that comfortable? Yeah, there. I mean, there. I just did this clean out actually um, of my closet where I have about. 250 pairs i need to make room you know mm-hmm. when you have a kid it's things change yeah. and 
uh, conversations are had, <laughs> and <laughs> and I lost that convo. So Wifey, yeah. uh, you know, 250 pairs uh, had to come out of the closet. Or How both, hard was both that? closets. Very, very. Actually, took like three days for me to figure out what I'm going to take out of the closet because mm. these are like there are a lot of shoes that have sentimental value to me, but they got to go. Yeah, it's like you're you like know, an so. internal conversation on like each shoe about like. Dude, I'm there like look, and that's why it took so long. I'm there like staring at the mm. shoe, and my wife is like, "If you have to stare at it, you're not going to wear it." Mm. You know, like so. You know, it's uh, it's tough, but I have this um this large amount of footwear that I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with. So I'm having some conversations about where they go. And I had my nephews come and look at the batch and, you know, I have to figure out what I'm gonna do. Yeah. But I feel like you you were like a big like 90s Nike basketball guy. Yeah, like a, lot up, up a lot of up-tempos. tempos. Are yeah. those shoes that you find yourself like not going to as often? Yes, I'm wearing up tempos a little bit less only because now it's like, I don't have a lot of time to even put put an outfit together in the morning the way I used to. It used to take me like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't even have that time anymore. So like, I'm just grabbing things on the go. And, you know, when they, when they talk about dad shoes or dad life, it's like, that's part of it. It's not only the comfort, it's about just grabbing a comfortable shoe and the necessity starting, of it all and starting your day. Yeah. It becomes a lot about necessity. I would say that for sure. Right. So that's, that's why I think um, this like Y2K moment is uh, very much my speed. My speed. You're into it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've always, the thing is, I've always been into it. I've always been into that era of footwear. I always thought that that era was ahead of itself. I think that there are a lot of shoes in my rotation that were always like, you know, it was a nod. I always had a nod to that era. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a fashionable moment now. It's like, a, it's, you know, high on the trend pole, but yeah. I think it finally caught up with the times in terms of what the designs were back then. You know, um, I think that it's right for the for the times now. Is yeah. it is it crazy for you? Because I I go back in a lot of these shoes, and you know, you did the whole recent ASIC collection, the mesh with the Kayano, fourteen and the eleven thirty. And I just remember those shoes like when I was working at Dick's and like yeah. Foot Locker and the, I remember, I think it was like the 1120 or 1130 was a Black Friday doorbuster for 49.99. And right. I never saw it through the lens that this was gonna be the, the cool shoe one day. And obviously you working in sneakers through the same era. Did you think back then seeing those that these no, shoes would have a moment? No, of course not. I mean, back then you have to, you have to realize that like, you look at this year's Kayano shoe, for yeah. example. That's like the marathon runner for a lot of these runners, right? Yeah. Mm. And and back then it was no different. Mm -hmm. So it was like their cross country shoe. No. Kayanu training in practice, track practice. Yeah, but it's a running shoe. That's right? what I mean. Yeah. That's what we were wearing in like track practice. Right, but that's not a cross training shoe. Right? Well, for cross country, cross country, cross country, cross country you running. Right, 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 right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. What'd you're right. you say? <laughs> no, you were you were buying sneakers from the wrong people. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was a, the Kayano was a was a running practice yeah. shoe. The distance runners. That's what we would wear. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But but I don't know if I would call it a practice shoe because people were running marathons in the shoes. Well, you wear track spikes on like the track. You train in the Kayano. Correct. Okay. So. I think that the Kayano back then, like that's what that was, you know, if you look at the Kayano today, eventually, you know, who knows, 20 years from now, that could be the same, you know, we could have the same kind of moment where it, w it wasn't right for today. And I'm not saying it's not right for today. It's right for the runner. But in terms of transcending the street, you know, it took a lot of time for, for that kind of design to catch up. Yeah. yeah. Well, before we get too deep, I do want to talk about our shoes that we have on feet as this customer on here, especially because I'm wearing Kayanos. But Ronnie... What, oh, did, you, what nice. did you step to the set with on feet today? These are not out yet, we'll but it's been, it's one of my favorite threes that I've worked on recently. We have some special plans for this pair, okay. but they're called the blush threes. And I went back to the well and kind of like, you know, started working on uh, footwear the way I used to back in 07 mm -hmm. and spent a lot of time color blocking and, you know, sampling different versions of colorways, similarly to what I did with X-Men which had a lot of different rounds of samples that I felt really good about. Uh, I felt really good about the process. And when that happens, like I feel a lot better come release date uh, or, you know, a couple of weeks leading up to the release where I really get behind the product because I felt really good about the process. Yeah. And, and that, that felt really, really good uh, working on that project. It, it the, feels like a lot lately. And I mean, I, I said this multiple times where it feels like this year. Yeah 
you've had such uh, more like hyper focus on the footwear. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because you say going back to where you were and it felt like maybe there was a period where you're so focused on expanding Kith as a brand in the in the retail operations, but this year your footwear projects felt like yeah. 10 years ago. Is yeah. that intentional or? I, I, love, I love that you say that because that's internally, we speak about that. And I did, um, as, as uh, collaborative projects and collaborations as a whole started to feel a bit saturated, not a bit, really saturated and I felt like the best ideas weren't winning it was just like doing things for the wrong reasons not all but mm. some I would say and it made me feel like you know uh like if I was to work on certain things it might get lost during that time so I look at the cycles because I've been around for a while so it's 28 years this past June and I've seen you know these cycles where um the time is right for energy and for great ideas to come out and I felt like this year, if these if these projects came out maybe two years ago, uh, may have may have had a, a very different type of reaction. So I like that I like that you've noticed that because I was very focused on building the apparel line, which I still am. Mm -hmm. You know, I still fit like four or five hours a week. You know, uh, product, whether it's footwear or apparel, I'm still fitting. I'm still involved in the process and you know concepting of every product that we make but i took it upon myself to kind of reset um what collaborative footwear looked like from our camp would you say you passed on a lot more this year compared to past years to remain like focused on certain projects for us it's a little bit different for the way that we work we have the kind of relationships that i really respect where the brands lean on us for great ideas mm -hmm. And, you know, they lean on me also like for figuring out when the time is right to release certain product. And I've been lucky enough to be in that position. But um, I think that this year, when you look at, you know, what we did with Clarks and Adidas, the best ideas are winning in the room. And that's, that's, a, that's a, a great place to be. And also like the team that I have, you know, between Lance, who's the director of, of, um, of footwear and, and the, the buying team. Mm -hmm. And then you have James Garcia, who's, uh, who's my right hand when it comes to design. And I think that together, you know, even Michael, my VP of product and Marlon who works on special projects. Like I feel like the team has, has meshed so well for a long time that, you know, I think they know the kind of ideas we need to have that can make it to the finish line and still be very creative. And that's, that's what they do so well is they give me the ability to have incredible ideas. When I think of something like this Marvel, this Marvel box, mm -hmm. right? It's like the red tape around doing something like this is, it's, there are so many layers and steps. And when I have an idea like that and it's spoken about in the room, it's important that everyone is excited because the amount of work that comes with that for everyone in the room is just, it's, it's enormous, you know? So, you know, that's, that's why this uh, project is so special to me because we were able to break down so many barriers in making it happen. If you want to talk more about those, yeah. I just want to make sure we all get our footwear. And uh, like I said, I have a uh, Kayano 14s on. This is the John pair. I love those. Yeah. I, have, I, I wear those a lot too, yeah. Yeah, it's not the most inspired choice for me today, but it's kind of the same thing you were talking about, about just like. Yeah, you're not a dad yet, but when you become one, <laughs> you'll realize that you'll feel exactly like you do today. <laughs> That's one of those shoes that I, I forgot that I had. Yeah. And I like pulled it out of the stash the other day and just was like, I'm so happy I have these sneakers mm. right now. Yeah, yeah. Solomon ACS Plus, Lorenzo G did these for me. They're a sample. Volcano. He did the kind of like the lighter colorway, but he made these for me. So shouts to him. Nice shoe, Joe. Those are cool. Yeah. Thank you. Doing a Stone, Stone Island, Island fuel yeah. cells. A little wonky to wear on foot, but you can run in them. So okay. we going running? Maybe. You got to run to Jersey City after this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the Marvel Project some more, Ronnie. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, so they. Oh yeah, I don't think have... they they didn't open oh, theirs yet. Oh, we okay. Have our pairs I brought here. I brought extra ones too, just in case. But um... well, this is exciting because oh yeah, yeah you're gonna unbox one. Pair. Yeah, yeah. Both, of them. both these guys. I don't nice. know what this colorway. Morning. Do you know what colorway is in here? You have I, no idea. I actually uh, have no idea. All I know is that you guys are on the list. Look yeah. at look at you guys. Yeah. The excitement <laughs> never stops. Marvel's strangest heroes have never been wilder. Yeah, that's right. Huge X Men fan. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. Wait, no, no, no. You got to take the shoe out of the sleeve. Did first. I mess the up? You gotta, no, just take the box out of the sleeve. What was Comic-Con <laughs> like, Ronnie? 
Comic-Con was, let me help you with that, huh? <laughs> yeah. you're, struggling, struggling, right? you're struggling. Joe, help him out. This is the difference that CrossFit makes. Wealthy, wealthy yeah. easily yeah. slid his yeah. out of a paper bag. I'm prepared for life. <laughs> Can't fight my way out of a wet paper bag, much less oh, a sneaker wow. box. I'm really struggling. <laughs> Turn upside like, down. Like the, it's like pulling off the big red boots? Yes. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you got a pair of big red boots yet? Uh, no, but uh, I, I like what those guys do. They're Crea- creatively, they're... You crushing. Know, yeah, no, I'm, I'm friends with one of those guys, this, this kid Dan, who's... Yeah, shout out to Dan. Dan. Yeah, yeah he's, he, they're, they're a creative bunch, man. Yeah. And I, I like that, you know, they do things... Speci- they work backwards from, you know, moving the needle. So yeah. Disruption, like, for real. You always right. hear, dis- they're, like, disrupting, for I, real, I re- for real. I respect it. Yep. Yeah. But Comic-Con. Comic-Con. Unlike anything I've ever been to, you know, the, f- the first time I heard of Comic-Con was during uh, Entourage. Yeah, I knew Johnny you were going to say that. I knew <laughs> you were going to say that. You know, for Viking, Viking Quest. Quest. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. knew. Oh, my God. That was well, a, it's that, like synonymous no, with and, that kind and, of. And, and it blew my mind bit. because I was like, there's no way that's real. And I was right. watching it with someone who went to Comic-Con. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he was like, no, this is there's this show. There's a, and, and it was like before, I guess, the internet made Comic-Con a big deal. Right. Right? And... I found out that it was real, and and then I heard about it more and more throughout the years, and I was like, "Wow, it's like a trade show, but for it's consumer facing, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's like a trade show. Like we've been to the trade shows, yeah. It's really busy, and there are boots everywhere, but it's like you know, it's like cordial, right? It's like you know, it's calm. Yes. And then you show up to Comic Con, and it was one. like I was mind blown. It was like all these like minded individuals that are really there for the love of this shit, and it's like. Wow, like they actually are as passionate as I am, if not way more. The booth was amazing too. The booth oh, you guys had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was I think it was like the best booth there, to be honest. I walked around and I met a lot of great people, a lot of great, you know, comic shops that show up there and have incredible collections and I bought some incredible comics and some incredible cards. Uh but this this really brought back because I collected for real when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. Right? But we never got our shit graded. It was like, sure. it, it wasn't about having it in mint. Mm-hmm. It was about having the collection, you know? So uh, my friends and I, um, we love it. We, I actually spoke to a friend of mine who I haven't seen in, in over 15 years maybe. And we connected over this, you know? Because we used to collect together and he was showing me his collection and asked me if like I would sign a comic. for. And I was like, my fucking best friend. Yeah. Going, like, yeah. are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, That's weird for me, but you know, it was... Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna get into this. What's your card, Brendan? What's, What's up? Well, What's I think the card is is the same. That, let me just let's see if I can bu- open this up because I had a lot. Yeah, of it's it's a, it's a the it's card a, is the same as the shoes, notch, right? Right there, okay. you know. Did, did Lonnie, you the card is the same as the colorway of the shoes? Did, he already botched the yeah, fucking. He, wait, did anybody <laughs> did anybody cosplay as Ronnie Feig at at Comic Con? <laughs> 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 I amazing. saw a lookalike though in the airport. Well, I sent you. The picture I sent you in Austin the other day. Which one was that? The uh, the guy in the airport. Oh, yep. that looked. Like... <laughs> he wasn't going to. That guy really did. Look I know. Like I know. Me. Uh, let's see which ones you got, bro. Sick. Okay. This is the one. Oh, that's actually. This is the one. That's the uh... that's the rarest one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. How the. Wow. It was random. That's why. Wolverine. I'm a big. Joe's like, how come fan. I didn't get that? No, I got I'm the a, Cyclops. I'm a big so Wolverine like... fan. For real. That's yeah. That's my guy. So. Thank and, you. And that's the un. You're welcome. It wasn't purposely done, <laughs> but you are. But you are welcome. But just in general. Yeah. Those are the rarest ones. Wow. <laughs> those are the rarest ones. So beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful shoe. There's 416 of those. Damn. Give it a sniff. Or rip it from the other side. Oh. <laughs> all those, dead, from the other all side. those deadlifts. Wait, where does this open? Yeah, like that. Oh, there we go. There you go. <laughs> Who knew there that this would be the most uh, <laughs> challenging part of our show today? <laughs> right? Opening a box. All those muscles. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the, that's the one he was looking for yeah, as well, right? One. You said yeah. you wanted is the beast it? one. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is the one I like. Bro, this is all, this is all I lining promise up you, so well. Not by design. Yeah. Everything, nothing in life happens by coincidence. Uh, um, but those are, um, those are really good. I, the suede's crazy on these. Yeah. Some hairy suede. For I got beast. the Cyclops. You sounded disappointed. Were you, no, were, I like the Cyclops. Okay. Those, are, those are actually my favorite. <laughs> I like were you Cyclops. inspired at all by the the Bapes back in the day that came in all the? I spoke about it on the. What Tyler? On, I don't know if I'm going to call it a podcast, but I spoke about it during my conversation with Tyler about. Who, uh, I, sorry, I have to interrupt real quick. I believe it's Tyler's birthday today. Oh. 
Happy yeah. birthday, Tyler. I, I, actually, it is Tyler's birthday right? today. Yeah. Yes, okay, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So Should Tyler... we spend just 20 minutes on that right now? Or <laughs> Happy birthday, Tyler. <laughs> I love Tyler, man. Yes. Everyone loves Tyler. How could you not? Yeah, Sorry, go on. Great, great, great kid. Um, but we had a conversation about the same thing you just mentioned, which was, uh, you know, of course, of course, I was, I, I'm, in, I was inspired by everything Nigo did. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's embedded in me because that era in my life, I like that helped me um, think outside the box. You know what I'm saying? And I think that collection of footwear to me it wasn't very wearable, so I collected uh, that set. And I still have them in their blister pack because I couldn't wear them. Were you buying a lot of Bapes in their prime? Yeah. So back in the day, I was actually like, when we speak about trade, and, and this is what I want to get into because mm -hmm. this, this, the concept for this entire pack Trading. was for people to trade characters. Right. Right. And it makes me think about when the early days of SB, the first series of SB, I was trading um, SBs with Japan. Sure. And I was training for babe, for babes because mm. you couldn't get them in the States. So that's how I was getting my babes, uh, my babes does. And, um, you know, I think that that era of needing to trade footwear before, you know, the resale platforms came to be, they were there in Japan, but before Domaini brought that concept yeah. to the States, yeah. um, I was trading, <laughs> I, I was, I was trading SBs for, for bathing apes. Yeah. And I wanted to bring that feeling back where people are going to have to trade these shoes because if you don't if you want a certain character, the right. only way you're going to get them is either opening it. Yeah. You can't tell just the by the box which pair you're getting. No, you, no, for sure not. So, we can't even tell internally. Like there's no way to tell what's in the box. So, uh the only way to get the character is either to get lucky by opening the box and getting what you want or you're going to have to find a way to trade for the character you want. And that's the whole, and every I see, I've seen people complain. Yeah, about, I was like, wondering how the response has been so far. The response has been incredible. Yeah, like way better than I thought it would be, uh, way bigger than I thought it would mm -hmm. be. Uh, even though I thought it would do really well, it's just been overwhelming, right? But the trading, what it, what have you heard about the so, trading? So I'm seeing I'm seeing people complaining about it, but they're not going to have a choice when they get the pairs, mm -hmm. like they're gonna have to find a way to get their character. Right? And that's what you wanted. And that's what I wanted. And before we go live uh, with, the, with the shoes this, um, this weekend on Friday, you know, I am gonna put up a post on my social and I'm gonna use it. That post will be used for people to trade on. Okay. So I'm gonna start a forum basically. Sure, on, on in, my the, comments, in the comment section. On IG and yeah. you could comment to trade, right? And people can figure out a way. Or I'm sure there's gonna be Reddit threads mm -hmm. for people to find um, the character that they want. But I wanted to I wanted to do something that would would bring the spirit of trading back into the fold. That was the idea. Do you see with the people consuming these shoes, especially being at Comic Con, is it traditional Kith Ronnie Feig fans, or do is it a lot more comic that's superhero a, collectors, or a mix of both? Or? That was that's a great. You know, we had no idea what to expect, and when I say no idea, I mean we really had no clue if there would be people there who would even know the brand, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it's like such a comic. It's a different world. It's a whole different world, right? But the beauty about what we did was that we realized how far the brand actually like spans. It's like we had so many fans there for the brand and so many people that were wearing my product when they were online, you know, like I met so many, so many of, my fans and the brand's mm -hmm. fans that it was really surprising to me and really just like pleasantly surprising where I can go to a place that I had no idea what it was like or what to expect and have that many people come in and be interested in the collection as a whole. So it was, it was fun to interact with people that, you know, their purpose of being there, it's not the resell kid, mm -hmm. you know, it's actually like the real, passionate people collectors collectors i was wondering how that crowd about re how many like resellers you saw like once they knew that you were going and if it was like flooded with those honestly it wasn't it was it was flooded with people that were buying but mm -hmm. not i don't think it was the reseller because the conversations i was having you know when i got there where i was signing people's comics you mm -hmm. know because i'm in the comic and it yeah. was that was like so surreal to me but um the conversation i had conversations with everyone and they were so about it like 
about the product. Wait, they, the put, they put you in this comic book? Yeah, yeah it was. A, that's the second comic, actually. Um, the Spider. I'm featured in the first Spider-Man comic. Uh, There's a Nigel last Sylvester year. cameo. In yeah, there Nigel. Well? Yeah, uh, yeah, Greg. Greg Una. Nigel's in it. Um, Greg's in it. Pokey's in it. Uh, I got to include some of my friends. I took X-Men to the Knicks game in there, like. There's some really cool shit That's going cool. on in there. So. Can you recount for me step by step the Marvel versus Capcom match between you and Eugene Tong? <laughs> <laughs> did you really destroy our dear friend Eugene and Marvel versus Capcom? Who's I the did, trio? Man. Who's the team? I, I did. We're gonna see you at Evo next, popping out playing Third Strike or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was my Street Fighter Two was my that was like fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Yeah. You know, we were walking from PS one seventy eight, my elementary school. Um, we would walk for lunch. We'd walk to Union Turnpike to a St. John. It was back then. It was called St. John's Pizzeria. Mm -hmm. And in the back, there was a Street Fighter Two arcade game. And back then, all you needed was a quarter. And yeah. if you were winning, you were staying on. Just and I was out Hadoukens in the in the back of the. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who were you maining? Were you a Ryu guy? I was. A, I was a Ken guy. Okay. I was a Ken and Ken Ryu Masters. guy. But okay. those were my those were my two uh, main guys. But I, I was playing with Guile, with Blanca. Like I could play with any character. I was heavy into Street Fighter too, like really heavy. Into I love it. to hear that. Yeah, so I was uh, I was playing with Eugene, and you know, I had to give I, him the business. I fucked him up <laughs> uh, pretty bad, pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? And and Capcom wasn't my thing. Yeah, like I was NBC, original Street yeah. Fighter too. So like, you know, he was pulling fucking cables, pulling out guns, Wolverine. Like, I mean, I was like, what the fuck is going on? But, I didn't know you could get shot in this game. <laughs> like, uh, but it was but it was it, it was a lot of fun, and the arcade was a big part of the release strategy for us on what we wanted to do and what we wanted to make. You know, when we sit down and we think about the products that we want to make for a collection, uh, that was one that I think will be remembered. Yeah, was any of your trepidation around the project centered on this style not really being in vogue right now? Because we've talked about the Y two K aesthetic, and yeah. like mm -hmm. this to me is classic Ronnie Feig and feels like. Right. The, the, the shoes that I so love from you from 10 years ago. You know, I was finding Ultramarine GT2s right, right. and stuff in you my saw closet me in the cold this week. photo shoot. <laughs> right. You know, but, and this feels like from that era, but this to me is not what people are super into right now. So yeah. was there any worry for you about that? Yes, there was. Uh, but, you know, when, when it came to the decision on which silhouette I would work on, uh, and we were, li we were really brainstorming, like, hey, like, so we knew we wanted to attach it to A6 because that's like, you know, I think closest to my heart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we knew we wanted to create a collectible product. And we had to think about, hey, like what's what's the product that's gonna withstand time and not just be, you know, for the moment. Uh, and even though I don't know how long this Y2K moment will last, because again, like I'll be wearing some of these shoes for a long time mm -hmm. just because they're so comfortable. And to me, they look great. I don't think they can, I don't think they'll get dated. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a realization that, like I said before, the designs caught up with the time, right? Or the time has caught up with the designs, one of the two. Yeah. But my, my point is like, I wanted it to be timeless. And uh, the Jelly 3, there's only been one year that I haven't worked on a on a 3 in uh, since 07. Since really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. And I think it was the year after the Montclair's uh, released. There was one year, uh, a one year gap. So, you know, it's been a while. It's been 16 years. Yeah. So for 15 out of the 16, I've mm. worked on a 3. And I know that people are super into one category of footwear, right. or two actually, because if you look at the Samba and like low profile court, mm -hmm. and then you look at Y2K, and it's kind of driving, you know, driving the industry right now. But I don't look at the market that way. Even though a lot of people are gravitating towards two parts of the market, it doesn't mean that like the classic part of the market goes away. Mm -hmm. um, there is always going to be, you know, someone is someone waiting to wear a pair of classic shoes in their closet for that day? Like to me, it's like people have multiple pairs of shoes in their closet. Yeah. So they're not all, they're not gonna have all Y2K and low profile shoes. Like they're gonna have shoes that round out, you know, their vibe. Right. Is there one saying that I, I'm always interested, what's the like, what's a shoe recently that you've taken out of like the closet that you haven't worn in a while? I think the footscape. Right, like, mm -hmm. I, and you know, I have a very large collection of footscapes because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a footscape guy from day one. Yeah. But I have been wearing footscapes. I just haven't been wearing like my really old footscapes. Okay. Like, I, so I have, I probably have like 
30 to 40 pairs of footscape wovens because I, I have mostly even all after you, the, the cut down that you spoke about earlier where yeah you're those, I'm not get, those okay. I'll never get rid of those, <laughs> those I'll never get rid yeah. of because th- those are like some of my favorite shoes right yeah. but you know I've always been a spirit on guy like we were just talking about the spirit on and how like it fits yeah, into the mesh of course but I've always been... Sorry, I have to mention this. Right. The people who are listening, Ronnie didn't hear the intro where we were yeah, talking about Spiritons oh, for exactly. 10 minutes. He doesn't even know. So I did not hear that. He brought it, today. Dunn brought it up like up. when yeah. you were driving here. Dunn brought it up about how the Spiriton would fit into this moment right now. Yeah, because, you know, I read what you wrote about Nike this morning. I think it was... He uh, mentioned that oh, too. You, yeah. you mentioned like, is Nike... Collaborators. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I, I, I said... Right. I had sorry. said something along... Someone had mentioned to me the other day... They think that Nike may be in a slump at this moment because what's popular right now isn't right. necessarily what Nike's best at. Correct. And I I, I don't know if I agree with that because uh, – and I know you, you asked the question. I'm not saying that you agreed or not. It's but not something I said. It it's always, right. uh, no, no, no. I, he I, I, does no, a little hear, rhetoric though. I, I hear, I hear, you know how he feels I a know, little bit. I know. He likes to sway. Yeah, you know, like, you he know likes how he likes to lead the witness. He's leading the witness. But, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. But, exactly. But, but, That's but, perfect. But, but really, I think the, Vom- the Vomero, <laughs> you know, and the Spiridon to me, like those were so ahead of their time. And I've been wearing Spiridon since then, right? So like I have pairs, I have original pair since then i've resold actually the royal pair which never came back out the OGs. resold meaning you put a new sole on them no 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 the soles came the soles were starting to come off and i had to have them glued back on right yeah right so not resold right but, 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 I, I just meant, no, but resold resold, on, resold right. versus resold right yeah. right right not resold yeah. <laughs> no. yes, 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 yes. you didn't, you didn't yeah. put them on you didn't log no. on to the goat app and no. say uh, nds <laughs> no that, Definitely, definitely not. But uh, I, I, I always loved Spiridons. I have a collection of many different colorways of Spiridons. I actually saw LeBron wearing a pair of gold Spiridons recently, mm. like last week or two weeks ago, which I'm hoping, you know, Nike brings back because that's my favorite or it's a top five shoe for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially the OG color. But my, my point in saying that was like, I've always, I've always uh, spread like, what I love across, you know, different categories of footwear in my closet. Mm-hmm. So I think that the consumers that, or, or the fans of the brand and collectors of, of my product, they, I think they do the same. And I think there's always going to be room in the closet for a Gel Light 3, mm-hmm. for someone who follows myself or the brand, just because we've been doing it for so long and we've been consistent. And I think consistency is key. What hurts is when you go away from something and you're not true to that silhouette. Mm-hmm. And then you come back to it only when you think it's fashionable. Hot in the market. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're real, if you're doing things for the right reasons, then there'll always be a consumer for it. Yeah. You know? Do you mention that you hoped that Spiridons were coming or that Nike might bring some back? How much sway do you have in those conversations? I, I feel like the brands must be coming to you sometimes and checking the temperature and stuff and saying, hey, do you think this is right for the market? Is it even more than that? Do you think you have the power to go to a brand's archive and say, this is the one, you should have this in the market right now? Would you do that? I think with, with some brands uh, more than others, like you'll see some stuff coming soon um, from, f- not from Nike, but mm-hmm. from another brand. Uh, so, some brands look to us for that. Some brands want to hear what we have to, what we think and what we have to say, you know, um, about where we think the market is heading. I don't think I have that sort of influence with Nike. I think Nike have some really great, and I know some of the people up there, like, I think they have some really great talent of, of people who understand the market and, and where Nike needs to go. But I would never, you know, I hear a lot of chatter and like see a lot of things, read a lot of things from people like, you know, Nike, the magic of what, you know, the magic of Nike will always be there for me, mm-hmm. you know, and I think they have a ton in the archive that they can play with. But also, like, I know when they start to get innovative, like, we're always interested in that. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone that isn't interested in seeing that. So, you know, it's going to be interesting in seeing uh, what happens there. But I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, all of the brands that we carry. I'm a footwear guy. I'm not a sneaker guy. I, I like good product. And, you know, I like to have fun. To me, this idea where I get to mesh worlds, like like my own worlds of, you know, back when I used to collect cards and comics to when I started to collect footwear and then meshing the two. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a lot of fun. Like I had a lot of fun with this project. Yeah. 
You know, and, and that's what makes me feel like I'm back in, in, in that sort of mode when all I was doing was working on footwear before there was even any clothing involved. So it, it gets me into that kind You're of- Back in your bag? Yeah, I'm back in my bag right now. Do, do you feel like- And the rest of the year, <laughs> yeah. Do, do you feel like, you know, it's at this moment with everything that's popular, it's just that all the kind of stars have aligned for you in, in some sense where it feels to some extent that the trends right now are almost what would have been on the shelves at David Z back in the day, just kind of like a oh, collection that's, that's, that's interesting. Of, of that, where you talk about an A6 1130, right. a Solomon, right. a Merrill, a Samba, a New Balance. It's so funny that you say that because it's like, it's what feels the most familiar to me, right? I've never thought about it that way, but I think that that's definitely true. Like, I, I think it's definitely true that I feel most comfortable in this, in this era of footwear, right? And you speak about the timeline, like even these Solomon shoes, like, you know, people, a lot of people don't know, those are like, re those are retros. Yeah. Right. They're all, yeah. They you know, a, a people lot just of, assume it's a new model because it's something they're not used to buying or yeah. seeing on a shelf. Correct, because they were ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. Like people weren't ready for it then, but they're ready for it now. That's what happened with footwear, you know, and you think about a lot of these like uh, basketball shoes too, like they got too ahead of their time and now it's gonna take, it's gonna take time for people to respect Mm -hmm. a lot of those designs because the evolution happened too quickly, right? You know, I saw that happening when I was at David Z. I saw like how brands were pushing the envelope and what happened was it was because of the competition, one brand would step, you know, uh, would step out of the norm or out of their comfort zone and then it would push the other brands to do the same. And all of a sudden you have like this whole era of footwear that seemed too fast for the consumer, but the insiders at the brand, like, they were very excited about the product at the time, but the, the they consumer knew it wasn't ready. For a reason. Yeah. They knew why it was there. Yeah, exa yeah, exactly. But you know, this is a very interesting time in footwear right now because, and I know everybody knows that, but for different reasons. I feel like people are more interested in trying new things in footwear, like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to step outside of what they typically would wear and try something new. And I think that that's what we're seeing right now. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it because to me, you know, footwear and fashion in general has always been the best form of self-expression, right? So I want people to try new things, um, you know, so they could fall in love with product for the right reasons. So they could fall in love with product for their own reasons and not necessarily buy into something that they were told to buy or, you know, influenced to buy off of seeing someone else wearing it. I like when people have their own you know, opinions like when people used to walk into David Z pre-internet era and try on six pairs of shoes before buying one. Without having somebody tell them beforehand that this is a classic, this is cool, this is what so-and-so wore. Exactly, they used to come in and they used to ask about information about certain silhouettes mm. and like, you know, like, or look for certain, you know, characteristics in footwear, like I want something waterproof or I want something, you know, made out of so-and-so materials and you'd be able to help them um, and then they'd come up you know, with their own decisions on what was right for them. Th those times have changed, but it's all cyclical and people are thirsty for information or people are thirsty to discover, right? So like, for example, the 2160s or the 2160s, which I think are incredible. Like to me, that's my favorite out of the Kayano 1130s or the 2160s like that, that are out now. That that dime release, right. like recently it was just like that shoe came out of nowhere, then all right. of a sudden everyone was talking about it. Right, well we were working parallel at the same time on our 2160s, but our 2160s released, like I wanted to release them in store only. Mm -hmm. Like right now you can only find them in store, like they're not online, we didn't promote them um, because we want people to discover the shoes on the wall for the first time. It's like, I'm trying my hardest to figure out how to get that feeling back, mm. you know, give that feeling back to the consumer. And it's worked because every time we put them on the wall, they're gone the same day. And it could be because of the era that we're in and yeah. the kind of footwear that's selling right now, but also the sense of discovery has kind of gone away. And mm -hmm. that's also part of this collection with the, with the three is being able to open a box and not know what you're getting inside. Like there is this like feeling of discovery that I think is missing from footwear at the moment that I'm trying to solve for. Talking about your year thus far, we're kind of a little over half of the year. I wanna talk kind of like the Samba moment because yeah. you know you decided to do a pre-order because the response was so overwhelming. <laughs> right. And 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you even told me like we, we had dinner the night, like you kind of maybe decided to do it, but did you expect that response to that shoe? You, no. You're always confident, but you didn't. Not at all, because to me, I turned the Samba into a shoe. Mm. You know, and we've been on Samba for a long time. Yeah, the white and green Before ones. it was, before it became, you know, what it is now, like the white and green Sambas released years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. It even released before we uh, promoted it for that first summer. Like we, we released it on, on the floor. Those shoes released, those shoes released three years ago. Bef so that's how long ago we're talking, yeah. right? Those Sambas. Um, and it was part of a bigger collection, but like, you know, the the court, Adidas court shoes, you know, I've always been a very big fan of all of those shoes. When I thought about what, what my deal is right now with Clark's on the eight, you know, I have my own collection with Clark's mm -hmm. 8th Street and I wanted to really portray the idea of, you know, shoes and athletic footwear coming together. That's the whole premise behind what I'm doing with 8th Street, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought the most familiar way to do that would be with an icon, right? And getting the two brands together and having that conversation, you know, and we spoke about it. I had a pod about that, and mm. I, I thought that that was really uh, informative. But um, being able to come together and do that was incredible for what I was trying to accomplish in footwear as a whole. Not so much like, you know, fill a void yeah. of what I thought. It is to fill a void and for that consumer, but not so much for it to, like, blow up to what it was. Uh, but the reaction to that was probably the biggest reaction I've ever had to any footwear project I've ever worked on. Wow. Really? Uh, yeah. And and honestly, this would be second to that. Wow. Uh, this Marvel project, which it, both in the same year is kind of crazy. But um, having, you know, and then working on that pre-order was important for me because I really, the goal was in speaking with both brands, we just wanted them on people's feet. Mm -hmm. And we wanted people to get, we wanted people to have those, you know? Usually it's like, I think about, okay, like I don't want too many people to have this product because I want people to feel special when they have them. Right. For this, it was very different. It was made to be a shoe, not a sneaker. Right? What's the difference? Because you and I had a brief conversation about them as well and you said that same line of, it's not really a sneaker. Right. Where do you draw the line? I think the fact that it was a crep, it has a crep sole mm -hmm. to me makes it more of a shoe than a sneaker. Even even when we did the break in which was the bullet upper from World of Niche. Right. When yeah. we put that on a crep sole, to me, it turns into a shoe. So even though it has like more of an athletic upper, more even, you know, more so even than the Samba, uh, I still consider it more of a shoe than a sneaker. The Samba upper is actually a perfect upper for a shoe, mm -hmm. especially in the way it was constructed and the last that we used. Like, I felt like it's a, it, it actually, we made a proper shoe. Mm. You know, and it has three stripes and the upper resembles, you know, the lines of a Samba. Uh, but we, we beefed it up and we changed we changed the construction of it completely. So, like, you know, I, I think that when people put that shoe on, it doesn't, it's not like they're wearing either their classic Samba or, you know, the Adidas uh, Clark Samba. Yeah. To them, they chose to wear a shoe that day. Right. Do, do you feel it's stressful trying to explain the pre-order process <laughs> to the consumer? I know... Last week, your friend Teddy releases three 860 V2s. Which all, I fucking love, by the way. All, all three of them. All pre-order. Yeah. And people are saying, I'm mad at X brand because I can't get a shoe on release date and it sells out. So I want them to do a pre-order. You actually do a pre-order and they yeah. go, I don't want to wait six months to get the shoe. Right. It's, it's, listen, it's, uh, today, it's very tough to please everybody or even to please most. Um, but I think that uh, trying to figure out a way to navigate this market in trying to get people, or trying to get shoes on people's feet and like letting people actually have access, it's uh, it's very tricky, right? It's like, it's very hard because the trends are moving so quickly also that it's hard to invest in something, you know, that far out to say, hey, we're gonna take this big, uh, you know, position on this, on this project or this silhouette. Like invest money into it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Invest money into it without knowing, you know, where it's gonna be six months from now. So like you have, and then that forces you to buy a smaller amount of product to sell, or you can say, hey, like we'll do this pre-order and, you know, let as many people decide if they want the shoes or not. Uh, and, you know, if you don't wanna wait, just don't buy them. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand what the issue is. Like, just don't buy the shoes. 
Are you looking forward to a future where we do more pre-orders on sneakers and gauge people's interests like that? Um, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. Like it wouldn't work for what I just did, right? Mm-hmm. Like with this, uh, you know, with this Marvel pack, um, because I feel like the nature of that needs to be limited. Like still special, of course, still yeah. secret in a way. Yeah, of course. Like these cards, for example, like that come with the shoes. Like it, it makes sense for it to be very limited. Um, I just, um, I feel like this market is very is getting tough to navigate for anyone uh, owning a business uh, within footwear because of how volatile it's been. Mm. And we're just trying to figure out, and you know, we have conversations about it. Teddy and I both have conversations about it and we try to make the best deci- decisions we can for the consumer's sake. Like, mm. but if you don't wanna wait, just don't buy it. It's yeah. all right. It's not, a, it's not a big deal, but there are many people that want them and they do buy them. So, you know, those guys that are willing to wait will get them and be happy that they did. How is Teddy able to crush it so hard at this moment. I know you're really close with him, but he doesn't talk a lot about the things he does yeah. publicly. Yeah, which... I'm not. I'm not here to talk for him, but I could just give you my point of view on what yeah. he's done, and I think he's uh, has one of the best eyes of our generation. Um, and you know, I love that he comes from such a pure place when it comes to product and what it feels and looks like, and you know he wants he wants to garner people's emotions, which I love. Mm. How do you? How He's do had you, a smirk like that the entire episode. Yeah, the way <laughs> have you noticed that? He's it's excited. No, the, what do you mean the like, entire? This what it's like working with him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about? Um, I feel like you don't like, want to talk about your nine nine three. That you love so much. Oh, I love. I that's I. I but lo- I feel like you didn't even. Sorry, I feel like you didn't even go hard like promotion or anything with that. You just dropped it. Which shoe? Yeah, but he. That's like. I don't want to speak. Yeah. For, he don't listen. He doesn't want to speak for Teddy. I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> but isn't that like one of your one of your favorite? Yes, I love. I love that shoe. The, the pistachio colorway. Yeah. Yeah. So so like you just said like we just dropped it and there are. Uh, moments where we sit down and we look at the calendar and we say which are the right shoes for us to just put out there mm-hmm. and let the consumer create their own like narrative narrative exactly for the for the product right and and i think that for some of the product it's right and for some of the product we have to drive the narrative to explain you know how many different things we had to explain like if you listen to the pod like about these shoes yeah there's so many layers about this shit that yeah. we have to explain it all yeah. and you know and then sometimes when the product is not like um, when it's not so, you know, obvious as to what the product is, we have to go and explain the thought process and what the mood is behind the product. Like Frank Lloyd Wright, as an example, like we have to explain where it came from and mm-hmm. tell that story. We can't just have a concept and a story for Frank Lloyd Wright and not tell his story and start to get, you know, super informative and create an experience uh, at his estate, you know? so. It, it, it all depends on the project, but I think people, like I said before, I think the discovery factor for, for footwear is super important right now. Can, can you address the, I guess, the controversy online, I guess, with both of those shoes? I think both of them came out great, but there's this whole debate about, I guess, what people call the kith filter on the, oh. on the, on the, those two shoes where they're like, I don't know if, it, the way it looked in the photo was the yeah. shoe, the way the shoe came out, and yeah. So, so I've been I've been shooting like Ian, who is our photographer in house photographer, who has done an incredible job. Um, he's he's just incredible. He shoots our campaigns. He's amazing. We've come up with what I like to have as this moment of these like in hand shots, mm-hmm. and we set up the lighting and you know the 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 the, the shoots for these different products that we like to show in hand. Uh, that's my style of showcasing the shoes. And there, there's, um, a se- it's, it's not in the edit, it's in the lighting, mm-hmm. right, of, of what we do there. So I'm not going to take a photo with, you know, and showcase the shoes for the first time, you know, by just shooting it in sunlight outside right. in my hand. Or like sitting that, on your desk in your office. Yeah, yeah, right. There's like, there's, you know, there's a, there's an art to it. You know, and and I like to showcase it the way I think looks most beautiful, and that's just the first iteration of seeing the shoe for the first time. And I don't think because I see the shoes in my hand, and then I see the edit, 
And I don't think they look far off. I think that if you understand photography and lighting, then you'll know like it's shot with a certain you know, certain lighting just for the drop. And it's been the same lighting for all of the shoes. That's the, that's the biggest thing. That's what I don't understand is like all of those different shots that are in my hand are set up with the same lighting. So it's not a kith filter. It's just uh, the first way I like to showcase certain products. I feel like that level of being intentional is what has helped you also separate your products. Even when I was thinking about these gel light threes and as they were arriving, there is some level of the shoe where it could sit on a shelf and it could look like an inline GR Gel Light 3. But then when you understand everything that went into it and then you see the booth at Comic-Con and you see the packaging and things like that, I, I literally said to our team, like, this is why, and I'm not just saying this because you're here, you know, we had this conversation, mm -hmm. like, Ronnie is on a different level because it's not just the shoe itself, like, the the effort that goes into it beyond that right. is is more than anybody else. Right, but but also you have to think back to like the first time you know leather was put on a Gel Light Three. Mm -hmm. You have to think back to the first time that perf pattern was put on pig on a Gel Light Three, um, and you know I was part of that. Yeah. Right. So like th those were my shoes to come out. So I've, you know, when when you say like it could be a GR, like the materials on these shoes could not be a GR. Mm -hmm. They're 195 retail because they're premium, um, and. I think it's it's a lot more premium than you know some of the Gel Light 3s that you've seen um, that were GR releases. Uh, but I, I like if you look at those beasts, for example, you know the combination of suede, and then you look at the Storm with the pony hair. They're not GRs, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I think that Asics has done a really good job evolving their GRs, though. Uh, so they've done a good job there. But this is also on the remaster, which is only available through uh, my Gel Light 3s at the moment. Um, which is important for me. Yeah, because yeah. Because I feel like the shape, you know, you, you know how I get about of course. <laughs> about yeah. the sh the shape and runners like it's it's important for me. I think even last time you were, you were on here, I think I was wearing one of the palette right gel light 3s and you're like, "I like the shoe, but I don't like the shape or the palette on the 3 that they you know, they've they switched to the OG gel light 3. Uh, silhouette, which is one to one with the original OG, but the original OG was in uh, a faux buck and a mesh that really took that last well, mm -hmm. right? But the minute you build it up with you know suede and heavier materials, I think that the 07 remaster takes heavier materials better than their you know better than their OG. I like the OG for certain materials, and then I like the remaster better for the materials that I typically use. I love this. We're in real shoe dog mode yes, now. I yes. feel like we just need to go yes. 40 minutes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot. And the, the conversations that we have internally about this type of um, silhouette and shape and last and that kind of conversations about materials, and we, we really go deep into it, and we hope that the consumer cares about those things. Yeah. You know? All right, listen, this drops Friday. Mm -hmm. Right. The shoes drop July 28th. Kith Asics Marvel collab dropped the same day. Oh, I just realized. Hold on. What? Hold on. We're going another 40 thing. minutes. Oh, the Magneto. Yeah, I brought the Magnetos with me. Wow, I wanted, yes. I Let me see that. See yes. Here you go. Why Beautiful. Didn't you Why didn't you drop those ones? Was there a... Um, because... <laughs> And here's the second uh, version with the oh, leather wow. instead of a new buck here. Um, These are hard. If you had the leather. The marble hit on the back. Uh, yeah, they're crazy. And Do then, they all have the marble hit on the back or is this just the sample has that? No, it's just um, it's just a sample. I decided to remove that. Okay. And, uh, and I decided I removed that because I wanted the shoes to be wearable where... It can be yes. I know. It can I know be represented yeah. for a character, or it could be a nice shoe, clean shoe, yeah, not too a heavy. Shoe. Not, the, I'm the guy who heel. went to Comic Con. Not that there's yeah. anything wrong with that, not, but yeah. No, but but it could be for the guy that went to Comic Con. Exactly, exactly. And they could love it because you know there's a label that's sewn into the insole, so you know it's for the specific character. But I wanted them to be worn, not specifically for the comic, you know, the co Comic Con or the character or Marvel. Yeah. Like I just wanted to. I just wanted them to be great shoes that would age well. You know, for those that just wanted to wear the shoes and not associated to a character. These remind me of like your first run of gel light. Threes. They do a little. Yeah. I had the same thought. Like this fits like perfectly in the whole like leather back salmon toe. ECP. 
Yeah, I think those do too on the table, yeah. and I think those do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. they, yeah. I think they all kind of fit the collection. When you look back in the in the archive, I think that they it makes sense in the catalog. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do the discography. I'm just really, so in the comic book, you're the guy tied up in the subway. Is that that's right? Yeah. Did you did you decide that that's the scenario that you wanted to be in? Or? We, we worked together with Marvel on it. But I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to ruin a few. I don't want you to read spoil it. the oh, spoilers. Well, you yes. thought you were you thought you were going to show up on the platform with your muscles trying to save him? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Okay. What would your superpowers be? Yeah, I, I have no idea. What is it? Well, I, I can think no of idea. a couple. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a surprise though on the back of that comic right there we don't have to talk about it right now but mm, interesting yeah oh, wow. so people can see that but um, anyway thank you guys uh, for having me on the show it's always good to talk footwear and yeah. speak about the state of, uh, of the market uh, which is very interesting and I think that there's been a lot that has happened since yeah. the last time I've been here so yeah a real treat always con congratulations on, on the 100 and happy to be here for that thank, thank you, you so Ronnie. much uh yeah, for joining us. Like yep. he said, 100th episode. Big release week for you. Big week for us. New name. Yeah. Complex Sneakers Show. The Complex Sneakers Show. You like show. it? It's got a ring to it, right? It does. It's a, it's a, it sounds like a run-on, but I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's cool. All right, everyone. This has been the Complex Sneakers Show. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe, comment. We will see you next week.